Learn from my stupidity. Let's talk about protein shakes and kidney stones. Today, we are talking protein shakes, protein powder, all things protein. So I have a uh, sort of a, a, a remark to read to you, I guess. Not really a question as much, but um, yeah, someone's in a, a sticky situation. So let me read that. I ended up in urgent care yesterday from pee and blood and passed a kidney stone at the ripe age of 29. I started my bodybuilding journey seriously about 45 days ago and went straight to consuming five scoops of protein per day, every day, in shakes, and clearly not drinking enough water to compensate. The doctor told me to temporarily halt the protein powder intake. <laughs> I mean, you know, people are like, oh, Jill, people would never do that. You're going to be surprised what people do, people. <laughs> I've heard it all. And I don't even say that anymore because there's always something new to hear that you're like, I can't believe it. I've had people tell me, well, you know, I eat, I mean, 10 fry pans, skillets of just mushrooms every day because they were lower in oxalate. I mean... I can't even tell you what I have heard people say. Just crazy things. So this kid, because he's 29 and I'm old as dirt, this kid says he's eating five scoops of protein powder a day. That's a lot. Did the protein powder itself cause the kidney stones? He also said he wasn't drinking a lot of fluids. The doctor told him to stop the protein powder. That's a lot of protein powder. I mean, usually the protein powders are between 20 and 25 grams of protein, right? So if we times that by five, there's over 100 grams of protein. Plus, he's eating food, you know. And here's the thing. I bodybuild. Once you get in the gym and you're bodybuilding and you're learning about that and researching about that, and I'm a certified personal trainer. I don't do anything with it, but I enjoy it so much. I said, why not get certified? They are telling you to pound the friggin' protein. You know, you can still grow muscles and not eat half as much protein as people are pounding, honestly. So, and there's a lot of research to say that. Now, he was getting over 500 grams of protein a day just from the powders. He didn't say he was eating no bars or any of that. So who knows what else he was doing. And again, he was eating food. He wasn't just having protein shakes. So he's pounding his protein for 45 days to gain some muscle. We get it. Did that cause his kidney stone? Was it, was it the protein powder itself that caused the kidney stone? There's so many things I would have to ask. Did he temporarily, because he was eating most likely even more protein than that, 100 grams of protein for a 30-year-old guy is not going to cause his kidney to shut down or anything, okay? I don't know from just that much, 100 grams of protein. That's not happening. I know a lot of bodybuilders at my gym, they're having 200 grams of protein, okay? 150 grams, a lot of protein. Not just from powders, from all the meat and everything they're eating. So my questions would be this. What else was he eating? Was it the kidney stone? Was he eating spinach? These people also tend, with their protein shakes, are putting a hell of a lot of spinach, almonds, all kinds of things. So I don't know if it was just the protein powder. I would ask this patient if he came to me, what else were you doing, Bobby? And then he would tell me, and then I could sort all this out. So there's that. Number two, I don't have a problem with protein powder. I use it. I use it in my baking. That's mostly where I use it these days. I have these wonderful chai donuts on the website. Free recipe, chai donuts. Google it. Jill, chai donuts, ox, low oxalate, <laughs> kidney stone diet. They are yeah, fabulous. 22 yeah, grams Yeah, that's protein. kidneystonediet.com. Thank you. Thank God for you. <laughs> and I get so excited about these chai donuts. So 22 grams of uh, protein in those. And so if you're like me, sometimes I'm in a rush. Sometimes I'm I'm just grabbing something on the fly. Sometimes I have too many calls and I'm getting, I got back from the gym, let me eat my donut with the decaf. I'll do it. So that's on the website. But so I'll, I use protein powder, but I use no sodium protein powder. Here's the other thing with protein powder. So much salt typically. Sometimes they have sugar, but people are smart enough to watch the added sugar, especially if they're bodybuilding. But they don't know 
to watch the sodium. Too much sodium will cause you to pee less. Too much sodium might be pulling too much calcium from your bone, dumping it into the urine, and that's a kidney stone risk. So turn it around, Buster Brown, and look at how much sodium is in your protein powder. A lot of these protein powders will have anywhere between 150 to 300 milligrams of sodium. If he's doing that five times a day, holy bajol, that's a lot of sodium plus what he's eating. So he's not drinking enough water. He's probably eating a heck of a lot of sodium. And he's really not peeing a lot, a lot because of all that. Plus, he didn't drink any water. Okay? So there's that. Like I said, most people are... Uh, uh, educated enough to keep sugar down. So many of these protein powders nowadays are unsweetened or sweetened with stevia or monk fruit or something else. So there's that. Some of these protein powders are high in spinach. If you're a vegetarian or a vegan, you're getting a protein powder that has spinach in it. Some protein powders just have spinach in it. Or you're putting spinach in your protein drink. So there's that. Um, there are protein powders that are collagen based and they will increase your urine oxalate. That's an issue. So that's an issue. Um, do I think that these five scoops of protein powder themselves cause the kidney stone? They definitely could have been a factor, but there were probably other factors as well. I've never seen patients that have one thing wrong coming to me with kidney stone history. Never. It's multiple things. And that's why preventing kidney stones is detailed. It has a lot of stuff going on. It's complicated. I make it real easy to understand. But I, when I'm looking at a urine collection, I've just done it for so many decades that I'm very good at it. I suck at so many things, folks. I'm not tooting my own horn. I, I, well, I am. But there's so few things I am good at. Urine collections, I'm good at. Because I've done it a long time. I better be. But they're complicated. And the multi-factor. Like you, like you multi said, the multi-factor. I was just going to say, too, in only 45 days, the likelihood of a stone going from not existing to existing, how likely would that be solely in that 45-day window? Unlikely. Mm -hmm. Did it help a stone on the move? Did it help a stone perhaps grow? That's enough time for a stone to grow. Did he make one stone in 45 days? Doubtful. It probably was there. He started working out. It started jiggling about and it moved. He could have had that stone for five years. So excellent point. Was it the protein powder? I don't know. Is the doctor wrong in saying stop it? No. The doctor should say First of all, the doctor may have said stop it because his kidney function is lower due to all the protein he was just, I don't know. There's so much we don't know. The doctor could, I don't have a problem that he said stop it, but he could say, let's give yourself a rest right now. Portion, not perfection. You can have a scoop of protein powder a day, but when you're slamming down protein powder all day long, it's not the best because typically they're very high in sodium. I have a, 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 po a protein, an unflavored pumpkin protein seed powder that I have my patients use. It's great. It's linked below the video. It's one of my favorite ones because it has no sodium, no sugar, obviously. And uh, I bake with it and it doesn't have any flavor. So it's really great. I use it in lieu of like instead of a cup of my oat bran flour, I'll use three fourths of a cup of my oat bran, oat bran flour that has protein and fiber, and then a quarter of a cup of my uh, pumpkin protein seed powder. It's wonderful. So I get to have snacks that have protein in it too. Um, most of you are overdoing protein, especially in the gym world, you're overdoing it. And so I would watch out for the salt in these products. You don't need, look, at some point, the amount of protein you're taking every day, you ain't getting more muscle growth from it. Eventually, that curve drops, okay? And you're all taking this excess. And also, when we take excess protein, we don't store protein. It helps, of course, for, pro uh, for muscle synthesis. But some people are taking so much protein, and we can't store it. So it then goes to fat, okay? So we've got to be, we pee it out. Or, and it stores as fat if you're overeating this. Most bodybuilders are not. 
uh, meaning because they're really exercising a lot. They're not storing it as fat is what I'm trying to say. They're very lean. They're into the whole scene. But the average person just starting a gym route, increase your protein. I have a protein calculator on my website that tells you how much total protein you should have. And, and, and in regards to meat protein, anything that swims, runs, or flies, we do have a cap on that. It's certainly sufficient. We just don't want you to have access because that can create uric acid stones, that can create calcium oxalate stones, and it can do that by increasing urine calcium, lowering urine pH, lowering urine citrate. There's many different factors. Again, it's complicated. If you want to know if you're eating too much meat, use that calculator. Also, get a urine collection. Very important. So for this kid, for this young man, uh, five scoops of protein powder seems very excessive to me. Uh, you can get your protein through diet and you can have a scoop, uh, depending upon what your needs are. But, you know, you go in the gym, you want to grow those muscles real fast, so you're going to do anything. And there's so many social influencers that will say 200 grams of protein. It's crazy. Okay. So I don't know if that protein powder caused his stone. He only did it for 45 days. It's unlikely he could have had an existing stone. He said he wasn't drinking enough water. He wasn't all of a sudden not drinking enough water, most likely. He probably has a habit of not drinking too much water. He could have a family history of stones. He could be eating too much salt. He could be eating, bodybuilders are known for, too much spinach and almond products in their smoothies. Because I watch a lot of YouTube with bodybuilders, they're all using the lower calorie almond milk with their smoothie prep preparation. So, uh, you know, there's so many factors here. One doesn't know, but five scoops of protein powder a day. His doctor is right. He should not be eating that much. Uh, a scoop of protein powder a day. I'm going to be very careful here, depending upon what you're doing in the gym. The, the big time athletes. Mr. Olympians may be using more than that, okay? But for the average person, you shouldn't be having more than a scoop of protein powder a day. Our elderly patients, the elderly patients I'm looking at, as we age, we have a harder time meeting our caloric needs. You'll see your great-grandmother, your grandmother eat like a bird. She doesn't have hunger like she used to. Some of my patients do use a protein powder. I do suggest the pumpkin seed protein powder unflavored uh, because it has no salt and that has helped them greatly meet their protein needs because many people aren't meeting the minimum of protein needs, especially the older we get or people who have been misinformed and they've lowered their protein needs to very little because they've made kidney stone formers. That is not what we want. We want moderate amounts, not too much, not too little. Think Goldilocks because you need it for strength. It's always best by natural foods, but sometimes we have to supplement. And so everybody here wants to get out of their chair. If you're 70 in five years, you want to be able to get out of your chair. You need enough protein. Kidneystonediet.com, how do I, ca calculating your protein needs? There's two articles. How much total protein do I need? And then that one will take you to calculate how much meat protein you're allowed to have on the kidney stone diet based upon your specific weight. Okay, so those are important articles. I think that's it. I'm pretty sure. Do you think, yeah. Jeff? Oh, yeah, that's perfect. And you can find everything kidney stone diet related to the kidney, kidney stone diet goals and steps through the diet itself at kidneystonediet.com. And you can sign up for Jill's free weekly newsletter where she sends you an email every weekend to keep you on track. But yes, that and everything else is at kidneystonediet.com. Yeah. And I want to say one more thing. Also, the flavor you're choosing. If you're a kidney stone former, I don't know if this guy was housing on, you know, five chocolate protein drinks a day. So that chocolate will also... Uh, increase. Also, some of the protein drinks that people are drinking, like Fairlife, Core Life, Core Power, they all have so much calcium, too much calcium in one serving. That can be an issue. Guys, this stuff is so complicated, so many things. Uh, we'll talk about protein drinks again in another video because there's a lot mm -hmm. to cover. And yeah, have a great day, everybody. <laughs> See you next week. Bye.